and welcome back to my channel, my beautiful squad. Today we're going to celebrate Black History Month with a set inspired by that poster. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is just switch the color of the, of the sky in the poster. It's yellow. I'm going to go ahead and just stick with traditional blue sky. And while I start decorating these nails, I thought I would just do something a little different today and go ahead and celebrate... Um, a woman I learned about recently who lived during the time of the Civil War and the Emancipation, was born a slave, but became kind of the designer to the stars of her day. She ended up working in D.C. during the presidency of Abraham Lincoln. Well, I can speak, guys, sorry. And designed lots of clothes for the ladies there, including um, the president's wife, Mary Todd Lincoln. So Elizabeth Hobbs Heckley was born in February 1818 in Dinwiddie County, Virginia. Um, everything I've said is that the circumstances surrounding her birth are unknown or complex. They aren't complex. Her dad owned her mom. He wanted to get busy and she couldn't say no. Okay, even if she had said, yeah, baby, I want you. Slaves cannot consent to sex. If you own someone and they are compelled to do as you say, that is that is not a consensual relationship. So she was born from a, a union between her mother, a slave, and her owner, and uh, which her her owner, her father slash owner is Colonel Armistead Burrell. Uh, his wife was also pregnant at the time she was conceived. So Lizzie actually grew up with her brothers and sisters and then went on to be slaves for them as well. And in fact, she was, as a child, and I've read both four and five years old, so I'm not sure exactly what age this began, but as a very, very young child, she was forced to be the, the main caregiver giver to one of her infant siblings. And on the very first day she was doing the job, she was rocking the baby in the baby's cradle and the baby tumbled out and she didn't really know what to do. So she tried to pick the baby up with a shovel, like a shovel for the um, fireplace and she was mercilessly whipped for that. So you know, that's just a small glimpse into the life that this woman lived, the, the hardships that she endured. Um, she, that, and that just, that's just the beginning of it. Like there's a part where she was living with her brother and his wife and because Lizzie had white heritage, because not only was she the, the daughter of her white father owner, she was, her mother was also of a white aristocracy, so to speak. And so there was a sense there that they had to keep her down even more. And so the her sister-in-law, in effect, got one of the neighbor dudes to just beat her to try to break her will. And eventually he got to the point where like, I'm not going to hit you anymore. I'm sorry, please forgive me. So her treatment as a young woman was horrific. She... um actually during her time as a slave was impregnated by one of her slavers and had a son named George who died during the Civil War. She ended up getting married to a man who claimed he was free but was probably a runaway slave and she didn't want to marry him though until she could procure her freedom. So she at this time was living with her sister and her husband. And so she had to basically beg her brother-in-law to let her buy her, herself and her son's freedom. 
And at the time, he set a price that would be astronomical for her to try to get, which was $1,200. Um, but she was a strong ass lady. And she started uh, doing work. She was already working as a seamstress and all of her earnings were going to the to her sister and his her husband. So her, her own freaking family who treated her just horrendously. Um, but she was making all these connections, right? Because she had to work with the ladies she was sewing, sewing for. So she would talk to them and they started to want to help her. And so they helped her get the $1,200. She got, she bought herself and her son's freedom. She started working for herself, earned the money to pay back the $1,200 to the ladies that she was working for, and then moved out of the, the area so that she could start a life for herself. And eventually she ended up in Washington, D.C., and started working for Mary Todd Lincoln because a lady who was going to, I believe it was the inauguration, wanted a dress by her and she needed it in like one week. And so Lizzie's like, girl, I cannot do that. And the lady was like, I will introduce you to Mrs. Lincoln. And she's like, girl, I could totally do that. And so she did. And the lady was so happy with her dress she became a hit of the social society and all the ladies came to uh, get dresses made from her. But even more importantly, she became really close friends with Mrs. Lincoln. And although their, their relationship ended poorly because Lizzie, she doesn't pull any punches and she tells the truth, and white society was really uncomfortable with her truth. So when she wrote her book, which was called, oh my goodness, where is it? Guys, I lost, I lost it. I have it right in front of me here. She wrote a book, which it's a title, but then it also is 30 years a slave and four years in, at the White House. Um, I'm gonna find it, you guys. Uh, when she wrote that book and published it, everyone got mad at her. So all of her work dried up. Mrs. Lincoln wouldn't talk to her anymore, um, which by this time it's past the point where, <coughs> excuse me, it's past the point where Mr. Lincoln has been, uh, or President Lincoln was assassinated. And um, she... She just kept going. She didn't stop. And even though she wasn't really making the big fancy dresses for the big fancy ladies anymore, she started teaching other women how to do it. And she started uh, societies and helped begin things that helped other women to free themselves from slavery and other men to free themselves from slavery and get started on a new life and to have a new chance at happiness in this place that is so inhospitable to them. So she not only paved a road for herself, she paved a road for the people that came after her. And that is something like, I, I can't, I'm, not, I'm barely scratching the surface, guys, of the things that she did. Like, she introduced Sojourner Truth to um, Abraham Lincoln. She was with the Lincolns or visited with the Lincolns after the end of the Civil War. And she was the, one of the first people that Mrs. Lincoln called for in her grief over her husband's assassination. She... Oh, the name of her book, Behind the Scenes by Elizabeth Keckley. And, but the, the, the subtitle of it is 30 Years a Slave and Four Years in the White House. So I did have that part right. Um, she, 
was unapologetically who she was. And she would not allow, from everything I've read about her, and I've spent a good part of today just digging into her story. Um, and I and not this isn't the first day I've read into her. I just really d dedicated some time today to, to her story because I wanted to come and just really give you guys an idea of how amazing this lady was. Uh, just the idea of being able to wear one of those amazing gowns that she made. And I did show you a couple, but please go check out more of her work. Uh, if you, I'm going to try to look for her book and see if I can find a copy of it to read. Um, I want to know more about her and I want to know more about people like her. Because I think, honestly, guys, if, if America is ever going to be an honest and true place, we have to be honest and true about how we got started and who we really are and the road we need to take to become better. And pretending that these things didn't happen or that people like her deserved treatment like this for some reason is just, that's, that's not going to get us anywhere. It's absolutely not going to make this world a better place. And I have no room in my life for anyone who thinks that way or tries to pass off that message. I think it's really important for us to be honest about who we are as a country and who we have been as a country. So this video is dedicated to Miss Elizabeth Keckley or Mrs. Elizabeth Keckley actually because her name is Hobbs. Um, her mother was married when she was born to a man who lived on another plantation, but um, they barely ever got to be together and they did get to live together as a family for a couple of years before her husband was again forced to go live on another plantation somewhere else and they never saw each other again. And she didn't even learn that she had a different, that that Mr. Hobbs wasn't her father until her mother's deathbed. So she didn't even understand that the people she worked for were her actual family until later. So that's just, that's devastating to me. So guys, please go spend a little time learning about this wonderful lady, Elizabeth Hobbs Keckley. She has just inspired me so much to just be a stronger, better woman and human. And I hope she does the same for you. If you have a favorite person in black history that we should know, because black history is American history, and we need to remember that. And I want to learn everything I can. Guys, this is the finished set. I hope that you think this honors Black History Month because that's how it comes from my heart. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. And don't forget to share everywhere that you watch or share videos. Oh my goodness. Thanks guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>